Hey everybody, welcome back to Champion Sons and our Planet Zoo series as we continue in the Austin Zoo today. It has been a while since we've been in the zoo. Um, I did test some things out and kind of made some adjustments to what we are going to be working on today, which is why you see me kind of playing around a little bit with the path work and all that and some of the landscaping. Uh, but today we are putting in two i think pretty big attractions right uh, we are going to be putting in a saltwater crocodile and a gharial i guess alligator is what it would be um so that's that's going to be in and with a saltwater crocodile i wanted to give the chance of and un, a semi underwater viewing, right? So he's not gonna, they're not gonna have that much um, overall land space because one, well, they spend the majority of their time in the water. And so I, I did drop it down to eight meters on the downside or down portion just to kind of give it that thing to where they can dive under the water, and give people a chance to view it from there. Um, and doing in trying to get the the water line set up i kind of tested it out before but made some slight little changes to the way the boundary for this would work um, having all glass on the main front side and then kind of giving it a lower boundary up on this little upper section to allow them to be watched from above while they're on land um, it, that that really was the goal we were going with here I, I did like how it turned out in the end. I think it works pretty dang well, mixing the glass with the wood barrier and getting the crocodiles um, in into their habitat and then continue to obviously mess around with some of those little alerts, mainly just closing them out. Now I'm just waiting for my zookeeper guys to come. I'm just checking on a couple of those habitats and here you can see them hauling butt to drop off these um, salties as I'll call them and now it's just going to be formatting the habitat to the animal I did want to check to make sure that they could go to all of those that they had basically as much of a free ring as they could um, to allow an entry and exit point for the water and so that's kind of what I was doing there and then mixing in some of the other landscaping things such as adding in the proper amount of rock soil some tree cover you know these things at least as far as whenever i see them they're primarily you know somewhere in i guess like an african river basically a dry bed where animals come to feed uh, could be completely wrong on what those are whenever i see them but they're also in the ocean beds i guess salt water so yeah kind of where oceans meet rivers and all that stuff i've seen in australia i would guess be honest now that i think about it i can't remember really where i've seen him or what it was on uh oh well minor detail minor detail really just you know when it comes to the habitat just formatting it to the animal and i know because i set it the levels at uh you know basically animal welfare is already taken care of one thing i realized that means you always have a hard shelter however with these animals and really any animal you're not going to have just straight up heart shelter right you, you're not always going to have that and so try to make it a semi more natural one uh, coming in here i put in that wall piece just to try and get the advanced move to i don't know if some of y'all have ever experienced it to where it gets on this that really weird access axis and isn't kind of leveled out where you want it to be uh, so I've, I've basically discovered you match everything up with a wall there it'll at least all be on that same access point right now here just changing these little covers you change them all to a single color and it turns they tend to work out pretty well i do like how they look and it provides pretty decent coverage and gives it at least a more natural feel um, to some form a degree now flipping those things around was a pain in the keister to cover up the other side but got it done and got their habitat pretty well taken care of and built um, 
it is a lot of space for him, but it's a habitat I really enjoyed seeing him in um, and putting together for them. And now I will say later in this episode, we are going to get to the Gariel and you're also going to have, we're also going to have a little bit of a live portion later on to where we're going to be able to catch up with everything that we've done in the zoo so far, as well as with all these new additions. Um, so we're, we're going to finish seeing these two habitats go in and then you'll kind of see what's, what's up for the zoo with where we are at this point in the surrounding areas and kind of get an idea of what we have coming up later on and where we're going to take this Austin Zoo. Now, hopefully I can get these episodes out in a little bit quicker time frame than what I have been. It's just a lot's been going on with the channel. And for anybody that's played Planet Zoo or Planet Coaster, you know that it requires a bunch of time investment um, in the game to build even the simplest of habitats. These two habitats you're going to see took, oh God, it sounds bad saying this, but somewhere around four to, I don't want to say five hours. It's just sped up quite a bit. So... That gives you an idea of what it takes to kind of play the game and just the drain that kind of comes from it. The creative drain, the mental drain of putting in all the little details um, in all the areas. Really, really kind of hits hard. So that one was the salt water. And now we're getting to the Gariel right now. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Let y'all enjoy catching up watching this Gariel, uh, be, these Gariels be placed. And then I will see y'all in the live episode or live portion. So I will catch up with everybody then later, y'all.
Hey everybody, we are here live in the zoo. Uh, this is going to be a little taking a look at just an overall zoo tour where we are and then also just looking at some of the new additions that I made off camera. Y'all watch the habitats get built, but let's go ahead and see some of the additions that we've made. Now coming in, here's our little entrance plaza section going back to our educational building, our first one. Um, and then just to recap, here is our lovely bear habitats as they are going for a nice little swim. Although he looks like he's struggling. Y'all always wonder, they call it the doggy paddle, but he's doing the doggy. They should call that thing the bear paddle. It would make people more likely to use it, I think. But either way, nice little bears enjoying life, having fun. Here's one of our first, you know, food sections that we had built um, here in the zoo. And there's a bunch of people up here. These, this little observation point, I'm glad it worked out for us. I wasn't sure if it was going to, um, but it turns out that it works out really well. And here's our little black bears running around for everybody to see. See, there was one. Where's the other? Ah, down in here getting ready to take a nap. I can't blame her or him. I don't know which one that is. All right. So now it's one of our, I guess, the second set of exhibits, more or less. Um, I mean, I guess the bears are really technically the second one if you don't count the aardvark, which I don't, let's face it. So here's our second set with our red lemur, red fur lemurs. And our red pandas. Here's our little lemur buddies running around in here somewhere. Ah, there they are in the bushes. I did have a problem with them escaping before. I'm not sure what was up with that. But I had them escape a couple times during the build. And look at that little feller go. Just running all over the place. Jumping on. Oh my lord, what a intense jump into that tree. Hey, I was expecting offspring. Nice. Well done, fella. Get your lady some babies. All right. Now we're going to move over here to the red panda exhibit. Let's see if we can't find any of these bad boys in here. Ah, there's one right there. What are you doing there, little feller? He's just jumping around, minding his own business. Just playing. So these, these habitats, I think, turned out really well. I really liked how those look. Now, here's the ones coming over here to what we did in our, um, so where did they go? Ah, yes, in our live portion that we had a couple weeks ago. I did make some changes in terms of I expanded out um, the tapirs habitat. They didn't have enough space, so I did expand them out a little bit further. Um, to give them the proper amount of space there. And, you know, at, at first, when I was doing the builds for these, I wasn't totally into it and, you know, liking them all that much. But now as I come back over them, I think they turned out pretty well. You know, they, they're looking pretty dang good. Um, so, yeah, not too shabby. And then there's our indoor miniature exhibits that we went over, uh, I guess, a couple episodes ago. It looks... I like the functionality of it. It's getting used pretty decent. Um, and so that, that's something that I'm really happy about. And there's our little children's playscape. Of course, it's unusable, but I, I think it looks decent. I, I enjoyed making that. It was, oddly enough, stressful for me, which is kind of strange. But I enjoyed it still, nonetheless. And then my little signs right there. Um, really liked how those came out. So now we're going to come back over here. And I'll show you what you kind of just noticed right there. And we have what I call Gator Alley. Even though it has a crocodile in it, I still like Gator Alley. Sounds pretty decent. Sounds good. And the first one we're going to look at is our saltwater crocodile. Uh, there it is, nice and under the water. I need to work on looking at changing the water, figuring out how to do that to try to make it a little bit more clear. Um, but there he is swimming right underneath with our underwater feeder. That turns out, works out pretty well the way we did it. I was kind of nervous um, with the height requirements for those. But, oh, turns out they're both under there. Ooh, all right. 
Let's go in and get a little bit closer look. There they are. Yeah, just just floating. Just doing a little bit of floating. Coming right at it. Oh my god. Okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that turns out that this turned out pretty well. I'm very happy with how that with how that goes. So all right, now moving over to the Gariel habitat. We'll take a look from up there in a little bit. So this is where you know the peep view is at. And let's see if we can't find that. It looks like one of them right there. Yep, just floating along, swimming in the water, doing what you gar eels do. So I, I, this turned out pretty well. There's a lot more water in here than you know they need, and than I, I really should, probably should have put in. But I think it works out pretty well, you know, with getting on the border of it right there. Um, I will probably have to fix that up some make it a little bit smoother at least um, but it keeps everybody safe especially with the fencing so I, I like how that turned out and now to take a look at the bridge point now these things that color of green I probably need to change just to dull it out some uh, it's a little too green for my liking but I think it turned out pretty well so let's take a look at the saltwater crocs from here they got their little island over there. And then, oh, there he is coming out. That's pretty cool. I like, I like how that works out. I want to get a little too much water, but they are saltwater crocodiles, so that's kind of what I'm going. Habitat cleanliness is at a disease risk. Oops, did not mean to shoot over there. Cleanliness. That's not a habitat. Oh, did I make that a habitat? I didn't think I did. Maybe I did. I'll check on that later. Off camera. Oop, don't want to show you that just yet. So we're going to zoom right on back over here to our saltwater crocs. I think Steve Irwin would very much approve of this exhibit. I really do. And there he is floating all the way over there. So it, it turns out pretty good. I like, in the, I like it in the end. I'm the harshest judge. Ooh, there they are giving a little speech. Sort of. Kind of just standing there, more or less. Hmm. We need to figure out how that works. It says March. Maybe they only do it once a year. I don't know. There's the other lady standing there. Well, people are gathered around, so that must mean something's going on. And here's our Gariel. Now, they have... Their plot is definitely way too big. Um, but there are about six of them in there, so... That's why I continue to make it that large. Now, the fencing is new. I don't think I had that on camera. Maybe I did. I don't remember at the time I'm doing this, to be honest with you. Um, so that one is new all along the borders there. And then the rock wall in the back. Well, I needed something to put in the back, and I really liked how that wall rocks was sealed off over here. And so I went on ahead and sealed it off on the back edge all along here um, coming down to the wood to where the wood steps end and it meets the concrete again so then I also some off camera boom once again the gator alley sign I put it on both sides for everybody in, coming and going once we get you know kind of a loop around built um, around all the other habitats so that turned out pretty well this fencing I like how it does seal it off um, you know, kind of keep everything. You have the big nature space in the middle, but overall everything else is pretty well sealed off. Now the saltwater crocs, and probably because they're constantly in the water floating around, are obviously big time attention drawers right there. Woo, throwing some money in. <laughs> Gotta like it. Got to like it. And so that's that was a big draw, and I think that, that was pretty successful. I like, I really do like how that turned out. A bear just drawing a lot of people. My goodness. So, what was else was new that we built off camera? And surprise! Boom! Snacks and stuff. Basically, it's just a you know shopping souvenir and snack center. Um, multiple ways you can go in. Everybody else is going in that way, mainly because all the habitats lead over there. As we get more stuff built over here, we'll start seeing people come through this way. But we're going to go through... The entrance without anybody all right so what do we have here I need to fix that grass obviously I see that now 
But basically just a bunch of shops and some simple little shading sections that we put up. Um, I did put benches around a lot of these, mainly just because, you know, it's a good seating area. People got enough space to wiggle through and it's covered under the shading section. So I, I think this turned out pretty well. I normally don't do builds that are quite like this too much, but it turns out that uh, I, I think it came out pretty well. I really do. It is all, you know, basically a plaster cover on the floor um, that I made white. So it kind of does stand out, obviously. And like that, once we get everything completed and built off over here on the back end, um, we're looking at we got, you know, we got basically our Arctic building to put in for the penguins and the polar bears. And then we also got the big cat section. We got, um, the primate area so we got a lot more stuff to build going on here um and this is all going to be filled in as you see the park boundary or not park zoo boundary it's pretty massive but keep in mind you know on this whole side right there is going to be a safari ride so um keeping that in mind that's really kind of what we're looking at for it and so yeah that's kind of where we stand in the zoo so i'm gonna go ahead and leave y'all with some final little cinematics of our newly added Gariel and Crocodile, and I will check in with y'all in the next episode. So, all right, everybody. As always, you know, stay safe and, well, later, y'all.